in our society today, people who don't have a lot of money or are not from a specific social class are looked down upon or cast away or not considered to be very valuable. But that is such a stark contrast from the way that God and the Bible speaks of the poor and those who are in need. Throughout the Bible, there are so many scriptures that reference this and our accountability for being helpful and for treating people with value, even if they may not have as much money as we do or if they don't have what we have. And that's something that as Christians, we really want to always be mindful of because unfortunately, we see this within the church as well. You know, if somebody comes in and they're not dressed right, they don't have on the right kind of suit or dress or whatever it is that we require them to wear our uniforms, whatever it is, then sometimes we look down on them. And we have to remember that all souls belong to God. And sometimes those people cross your path for you to help them. My mom used to say to me that if somebody crossed your path and they are in need and you can help them, you are supposed to help them. That's why they crossed your path. You don't have a right to decide whether they deserve anything or not, because when you think about it, none of us deserve anything. But in as much as God has blessed us and saved us, we should always be considerate of the next person. As always, I'm Volante here with the Sunday School Renaissance. And as you see, we're going to be doing a lot of different things. And I'm just excited to be back again. Thank you so much for all the love. I was literally almost in tears reading the comments. I did miss you all, and I'm so glad to be back. So this week's subject is justice and the marginalized. And when you look at the word marginalized, man, that shouldn't even be a word. We should not even have a concept of marginalized human beings, okay? We are all God's creation. We are all brothers and sisters, and we are all valuable. And even if that's you, if you fall into a marginalized category and you're watching this video, I want you to know and understand that you are valuable. I know as we're still moving through this pandemic, it had a different economic impact on a lot of people. And there are a lot of people who are hurting right now. A lot of people who are just, they, they lost a lot, not only money, jobs, family, everything, but even in this state, God values you. And we see here in the book of Deuteronomy in the 24th chapter, and as we know, the, the entire book of Deuteronomy is kind of a reminder of the law. As we know, God gave Moses the law in Exodus, but a lot happened. And Deuteronomy was kind of a reminder, you know, I don't want you to forget where you came from. Remember what God did for you. And I want you to pass that same kind of energy on to other people. So here we're talking about when you're lending something to your brother, right? That's where it starts at this 10th verse. When you lend your brother something, don't go into his house and, and, and fetch his pledge. Now, when you speak of a pledge, it's the same concept that we have today for lending collateral. So whatever you put up as collateral for the loan, if they are default on the loan, it says you cannot go into his house and retrieve that. And this is and it's showing you how to have respect for people. So even though it's your property that's in their house because they pledged it to you, give them the opportunity to come out and give it to you. You do not go in their house and just disrespect them just because they don't have the money. And then it says that you should stand, stand outside and let them bring it to you on their terms. And then it says, if this person is poor, don't keep it overnight. You can take it, you can keep it, but when the sun goes down, you need to return it if it's something that they need and they're poor. And it talks about um, that they need this for themselves and talks about widows, right, and clothing. And imagine being in such need that you have to get money on your clothing. And so at night when it's cold, you need to give that back to them because they may need it. And it also says that when the sun when the sun goes down, it talks about that. And even there's another scripture that talks about not letting the sun go down on your wrath. And and this this really jumped out at me because 
I'm a thinker. And when things happen, it kind of replays over and over in my head. And this sundown thing reminds us, let things go. Forget about it. You know, even if you lent somebody, lended somebody something and they didn't return it or, or they owe you, if you're not in lack and if you're not in need and if you're not hurting, let it go. You know, I'm not saying just give people everything you have, but we've got to learn how to let some things go and make room for more blessings. And then it goes on to talk about the oppression of people that are hired and how when people work for you to still show them respect. Has anybody ever had a boss that talked down to them or treated them nasty or treated people nasty? That's not how we should do. Even in church, you know, some church leaders I've had experience, they have been very nasty and that is so ungodly. And so this is telling us how to treat people, the poor, again, the poor and the needy. And I want you to think about how you treat the poor and needy. I know where my church sits it's in a very depressed area of Chicago, and we get people come in sometimes. Uh, they may be homeless. They may not have what they need, and we've got to be careful how we entreat people. And we're living in a day where you do have to be cautious because some people have ill intent, but we also want to be able to meet the needs of the people. We never want to be so high-minded until we overlook the people that God placed in our lives for us to be a blessing to them. And it talks again about the sun going down. If somebody worked for you and you owe them wages, said to pay them before the sun goes down. I like that. But even now, you know, again, we have these labor laws and it's not quite when the sun goes down, but on your payday, there is a certain number of hours in which you're supposed to receive your check. You can't, you know, you can't just work for somebody and they hold your money. And like I said last week, a lot of the laws of the land are derived from the laws of God. It's just that sometimes you have people in place who are unjust and they're not accurately administering the law. But for the most part, these laws were derived from this Mosaic law. And Jesus um, came and he kind of, full, he full, not kind of, he did fulfill the law that the righteousness of the law would be fulfilled in us, you know. So that is what we have to always remember. We can't just go on and say we're saved and forget about this stuff. And, you know, I love Jesus. And Jesus is all I need, but we treat everybody horribly. That is not going to work because so much of our salvation. If you take a real good look at your Bible and study it and look at what percentage of the Bible talks about how we treat each other. I say this all the time. You cannot go up in heaven and tell God, I love you. You can't do that right now. The way that you show your love for God is by showing love to other people to demonstrate the love of God in the way that you interact with people every single day. And then it says that, you know, the father is not going to be put to death for the children and neither are the children going to be put to death for the father. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. And as we know, according to the law, the wages of sin is death. That is why Jesus had to come because the law did not change. The wages of sin is still death. However, Jesus' death paid the price so that we don't have to die. We can live. And that's what this is telling us in as much as God had so much mercy on us that he sacrificed his only begotten son so that we could live, we ought to live and let live and show the same level of grace to our brothers and sisters that God has shown to us. You know, sometimes when somebody does something, again, you don't just let people abuse you, but sometimes people are really hurting and they're really struggling and they're really in need. And, and for me, you know, when I come across somebody in that situation, I'm not even going to lend you, lend it to you. I'm just going to give it to you. And what I found that there's a scripture that says, he that giveth to the poor lendeth to the Lord. That's my testimony. Because again, where my church is situated, I find myself in a lot of situations where I end up doing stuff and I know people can't pay me my rates and they can't pay me back. And, but, but God, God has paid me back in a way, you know, as, as I tell one day, I'm going to do a, a video testimony about even through 
the loss of my mom and the pandemic and everything that happened in 2020, by all standards, I should not be standing. I should not. I'm not supposed to be sitting here teaching this Sunday school lesson today. I take that back. I am supposed to be because God brought me through and he brought me to this point. And see, God has been so good to me. I can't go back and and, and be bitter or have anger or strife about anything anybody may have done to me or said to me don't even matter. And so this is what he's saying. We should have compassion and we should be willing to help. This world is tough. But what you don't want to do is allow society to cause you to become jaded and skeptic and cynical and always thinking the worst of people. I know because I was there. That's actually where I was when I started the Sanctuary Sunday School. And God delivered me from that through teaching on this platform because I was bitter. I was tired. I was burnt out and I wanted everything back that I had given to people that I felt like was using me. And God said, no, that ain't my spirit. That's not what I'm supposed to do. That is blocking the blessings that I have for you. So if we follow these lessons that are here in the book of Deuteronomy about how to lend people and how to respect those that are in need and the poor, then we can just be blessed. And remember, righteousness is a cycle of love. As in as much as God has loved and forgiven us, we should do the same to other and show to others and show consideration. We're talking about justice and the marginalized. And again, that marginalized word is used all the time. I hate that word because it just should not be used toward people. Nobody is insignificant. Nobody is a person that just doesn't matter. God created everybody and he loves everybody. And we have the charge to love everybody as well and when we have that genuine love for mankind we will treat each other with respect and we will value every human being